Hey all, and welcome back to Silent Hill. We're uh, getting further and further into this spooky school, and I'd be honest, I would prefer if it didn't show me stuff like this first thing in a part. We are definitely in deep now. Well, why would somebody hang a body? Oh, a gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth coming in there just for that. But of course, there's blood written on the walls. That's the you know, cherry on top. Huh, Leonard. I think reading this is supposed to trigger a memo appearing elsewhere in the school, so... It is worth reading. What, is this some kind of magic memo? Um, well, magic doesn't sound very scary, so I'm gonna say no. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess, kind of. It was like a ghost. Ooh. I gotta say, this aesthetic kind of reminds me of, um... A game I played back in the halcyon days of flashcards on the DS called Dementium the Ward. I think that game was definitely um, inspired by this style. Something I kind of miss about portable gaming, like the, the GBA or the DS running alongside, was like, you kind of would get this extension of older gens for a few extra years. You know, you kind of had like, you know, an extra few years of SNES games on GBA, an extra few years of PS1 games basically on, on DS. For um, sure, yeah. Now you have to go out of your way to do those aesthetics. You don't have, like, a reason. <laughs> Daddy? Help me. Daddy? Where are you? Cheryl! I'm in the nightmare realm, Cheryl. I'm coming as fast as possible. I hope you didn't pick up the other phone. It was probably Toe telling you to save your game. I, I can see why this game is, uh, you know, took off the way it did. I mean, it's hard to really think of any example in gaming, you know, that went quite as hard on the yeah. horror as this game did before. Like, I can't, I can't think of a scene like that in a game before this that, you know, wasn't perhaps done in text, like Clock Tower or something. Like, I don't know. I agree with your trailing off thought. I was getting, trying to get a better view there. It didn't work out. Uh, <laughs> Just going back to what you said in the first episode, Resident Evil, sort of similar, bigger focus on action. Like, I, I know a lot of people say Resident Evil 4 changed the game, as it were, but apart from, like, having more items freely available, it was kind of like that already. Uh, Action-wise, I mean, yeah, if you play 1, 2, 3, you can kind of see the it, it getting more action even, even, even by the time 3 comes out. It was definitely on a gradient. It's it's also worth pointing out that like um, the horror inspiration of uh, uh, the horror inspirations of Resident Evil are very like it's all very classic horror. It's all very like Hammer horror, you know, like um, zombies, big spiders, big snakes, you know, right? Like science experiments gone wrong, sort of things. And then uh, this was going in a whole uh, into a, a whole other realm of uh, of weird stuff, you know. What would even be, like, the closest approximation in the horror genre? What do you mean? Like, in any medium to Silent Hill? Yeah, like, movie-wise, shall we say. Uh, I think, um, Jacob's Ladder was a big inspiration. Though, I am... I'm a bit of a gamer, so I'm not as well-versed on these other mediums, whatever they are, you know? Like. <laughs> I, I gotta say, my weakest, like, <laughs> medium is probably music. Right. Okay. I think, like, obviously, Twin Peaks was a big inspiration, you know, going to this small town and there's a darkness lingering underneath it um, in America. I have actually got a list of uh, inspirations here. I have read the book Carrie by Stephen King. That was obviously a big inspiration. And a lot of Stephen King stuff was. Let's see. Uh, Psycho. That makes sense. Well, that's like, that's a very basic one. <laughs> like, I'm sure every, like... <laughs> okay, how about Jurassic Park? Oh, okay. Maybe in the way the creatures move. I feel like we're going way <laughs> beyond what is necessary. <laughs> uh, the Black Dahlia, that makes a lot of sense. Silence of the Lambs. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. That was the inspiration for Downpour. 
It's locked. Also locked. What a useless corridor. Definitely nothing like it though in video games before. You know, combining all these elements into into a game. Like, I mean, that's what impresses me the most about this game is that, like, you know, one day it like Silent Hill doesn't exist, and then one day this pops into the world. You know, like it's uh, Th that is what happened, Joe. Yeah. That is what happened. Yes, that is what happens with every game technically. But I just mean it's like a different. <laughs> it's like. You know, it's rare to release something and then like, okay, there's like, especially today when the mediums come so far, it's like hard to put something out and be like, oh wow, we haven't, we haven't seen anything like this before. No, I get it completely, mate. It's just, it's so funny. I think of myself as a very optimistic person, but next to you, who is a ray of sunshine when it comes to the things he likes, I'm like an old man saying, oh, things were so better back in my day. Yeah, well, I don't want to seem like too much of a curmudgeon. I mean, that's what your channel's for, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. We were kind of talking over it, but we put the pink rubber ball into that drain, so a key that was hanging there would come out of the drain. Right. And now we can use that key to progress. Babies, bugs, together at last, in death. Bugs life or bugs death. Yeah. Where's that sequel, Pixar? You're making sequels for every other bloody film. Are they? Uh, well, they're making Inside Out too. I'm looking forward to that. That's that was after my time. It, it was during your time. No, but it wasn't like when I was a kid watching Pixar stuff and like being really into it. You know. Like... Okay, is this gonna be another cat? <laughs> Meow. Nothing inside. Ah. I got me a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it's a well-played scare, I'd say. Thank you. That's a wall. Who loves tank controls? Inside Out is about emotions being literalized. Maybe it took some inspiration from Silent Hill, you know? <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out the most tactful way to say you're an idiot Charlie no it's fine if there's one thing Silent Hill fans like to do is go way way beyond um, what is acceptable when it comes to theorizing <laughs> what is going on uh, you see my head canon is that this is just another part of Britain it's not a nightmare realm yeah we have yet to make a uh um, comprehensive British school joke about this level, and that shows a lot of restraint on our part. Indeed. Uh, where's the offset, Inspector? This is what he's what he's forced to play before getting the job. He like he has to play this level. It's training. If you can make it through w without wanting to hang yourself due to the horror, you'll get the job, my friend. Like, it doesn't matter how many times I replay this game. I feel like unless you're a speedrunner learning it, I'm always checking the old door, like, thinking, is there anything in here? Well, it's not Luigi's Mansion, so you don't have to worry about the door slamming, like, you into a wall in a very comedic fashion. I mean, you did see Harry fall off that step before. That was a very Luigi's Mansion moment. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> I think this is the memo that only appears if you examine that wall. I, I might be wrong. Poltergeist. Manifestations of delusion, stress magnified into external energy, nightmares have in some cases been shown to trigger them. However, such phenomena do not appear to happen to just anyone. But it's not clear why. Adolescents, especially girls, are prone to this. Oh, you trying to disorientate me here? <laughs> it's interesting, right, because um, this is something you couldn't do in Resident Evil because of the pre-rendered backgrounds. You couldn't control the camera. Right, yeah. But even in uh, Dino Crisis 1, which was a, a Capcom game, uh, that was that had fully 3D graphics, and you also couldn't control the camera in that game. There was no reason you couldn't have. So, you know, sometimes they still made the decision not to bother. There's your Jurassic Park reference, though. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is a storybook about a lizard and a man who shot the lizard in the mouth to save a town. My God, I don't know if they're going to bring that. That might come in later. Yeah. 
Yeah, speaking of giant lizards, if Yoshi just rocked up out of the shadows, I would probably shit myself. Right, yes. It, you know, Yoshi is sort of a scary creature, and only the context saves him from being terrifying, I'd say. You know? <laughs> oh, if you don't know what Yoshi is, Jesus. But if you do know, oh, it's Yoshi. There he is. I'm in the egg-laying thing. I mean, kind of scary. Oh, look. It's another, another bloody health another drink. Health drink. <laughs> hey, look, this is all gonna pay off later when I'm chugging these things like crazy. Okay, like you're gonna, you you. <laughs> Don't die of diabetes before you find Cheryl, for love of God. I was a bit scared that the game had frozen here, but it loaded in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we get for mocking the health drinks, I guess. I'm saving very lightly here, so. So what's our mission right now? Uh, what? Uh, oh, uh, that's sort of the what's going right, on. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're we we're here looking for Cheryl, and things have gotten really bad. So I think our objective is survive. An ampule, eh? Uh, but if you're talking gameplay wise, what we've been trying to do is get down to the the basement at the moment, to the okay. room, right? By using various keys. To unlock our way around the school. Hell yeah, shite arm. Yeah, I'm getting out the big gun, I wonder why. What does he mean by this? I was actually, um, quite worried about this next bit, because this next puzzle, uh, it's pretty easy if you know exactly, like, like it's pretty, you can do it pretty quickly if you know what to do. Uh, you basically have to make, move these two valves to get the path forward open. But, uh, I've, I've done playthroughs where I've, I've been like rotating these things for like five minutes, like just not getting the right, like, so I was worried that was going to happen. Kind of like an Austin Powers corridor moment. It's, it's one of those, like, I mean, you know. It is one of those, yeah. It's one of those things that when you start doing it, you've sort of like, you you, you, you can make it worse for yourself than the puzzle started when you came into the room, you know? You can dig yourself deeper. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. No, dig up, stupid. <laughs> oh. And I still think it, it takes me a little bit here. I got nothing else to do but sit here and watch you, so... A lot of uh, bodies uh, covered in, in bandages and tarp hung around here. Yeah. And a lot of wheelchairs. Uh, this will all be on the test later, so just uh, throwing that out there. Okay, I'll have to get rid of the first episode in my mind just to make room for this. I think I was sweating at this point. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Tom's like... gonna be so mad. <laughs> Yeah! Ah, beautiful. In we go. Oh! Oh, Jesus! That is something this game has in, over Resident Evil as well. I feel like when you play PS1 Resident Evils, those characters, they don't react to anything. <laughs> They're just like ramrod still, you know? What a mansion. Very rarely do they go, uh, uh oh, but with their body language. <laughs> uh oh, I I'd be saying more than uh oh in an experience like this. Well, if, if I was on camera, I would have gone uh oh and then like you know made a movement. But you know, we'd... like if this thing came out of the fucking darkness, I would be saying uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've got to use the uh, the hint we were given in that storybook earlier. Shoot with the fucking mouth. Yes. Alright, let's do it. Ah, 
that interview with uh, the director Toyama I was talking about he was actually hanging out uh, it was it was like sort of a casual talk with Shinji Mikami who directed Resident Evil and Toyama confessed like when he didn't know what to do in Silent Hill he would just tell the staff copy Resident Evil <laughs> Oh, nice. Oh, we got him. And then, and then Mikami responds with, Ah, oh, yes. Classic director's secret technique. <laughs> <laughs> Copy other game. <laughs> very little is original. A lot of it is inspiration. That was a, it's a very interesting conversation. Um, I recommend looking it up. Did you send that lizard after us? Mm, we don't know. Oh, she was a ghost. What is happening? Well, we are back in the, you know, still, <laughs> still scary world, but slightly less scary world. Who in the hell was that? What a mansion. Oh, church bells ringing, that's never a good sign. When there's nobody around, I hate to word. K. Gordon Key. Now, K. Gordon was a, uh, a teacher written in the teacher list upstairs. Right, yes. And would you believe me if I told you that in Silent Hill 3, we find a memo written by K. Gordon? <gasps> I, guess I, would, I guess I would have to, because I haven't played it. <laughs> I'm just saying the legend of K. Gordon stretches far in this franchise. Is he related to Mick Gordon by any chance? Well, we haven't got we haven't dug that deep yet, but ask some Silent Hill fans. <laughs> Gonna get some Doom on the channel at some point. We have Doom 2016, but that's about it. Doom guy in Silent Hill. He would fuck a mob. It wouldn't even be a challenge for him. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Cheryl! I mean, even, even this guy's getting by, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, take a random protagonist of a game and put him in another game and see how he fares. In that uh, conversation between Mikami and, and Toyama, you know, Toyama, he directed this game, but he also directed the Siren games. Right. Um, and Mikami, he's known for Resident Evil, of course. And they were, they were, they were talking about how... You know, Mikami's horror games are always sort of like they're kind of based on science and they're not supernatural. And 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 Toyama's stuff is a lot more supernatural. And an interesting tidbit was that Mikami was like, "Yeah, I don't do supernatural horror because it doesn't do numbers." <laughs> like, um, which I find quite an interesting insight. He was like, "It doesn't sell as well." Oh right, I thought it was like, "There's no numbers in this game. Can't do it." They don't they don't sell as well, so I don't I don't do supernatural. It's nice to be back in Britain after oof, that horrible, horrible experience in the school. Yeah, it's funny how this was really scary when we started the game, and after going into the school, you come outside again, and you're like, oh, thank God, we're back in the, the scary fog town. This is way chiller. Everything's relative, you know? <laughs> I just want that. That's an optional place as well inside the school bus. In case you just want to add to your ever-growing collection of health drinks. Exactly. Now the goal here, pretty obvious, head towards the church, I'm assuming. Yeah, and we can only get to the church through K. Gordon's house, so good thing we have a K. Gordon key now. Ah. Now, is that what it's called, or is that what Kate Gordon calls it? I mean, that's what appears when you pick up the key, so... <laughs> I'll have this engraved so everyone knows it's my key. The K Gordon key. Yeah, I mean, they, they, you know, when you move into a place, they tell you to put the wrong number on the key in case you lose it. It's a, it's a good idea. Yeah. And look what happened, because K Gordon put his actual name on the key. We're just in his house now. You fool! Your handgun bullets are mine. 
Sure, I'm not even sure if Kay Gordon is a guy. I guess Kay could be a, a girl's name. I'm not even sure. I could, but don't know if I've ever known a girl to just leave handgun boys around. Well, it, it is America, mate. We don't know. Ah, uh, there's a picture of an owl. Evidence is piling up. Anyone with yes, anyone with a picture of an owl and, and bullets. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's just an all-American babe. You know, she loves guns. She loves uh, nature, owls. You know. Maybe, maybe. This is a stupid conversation. She's a teacher. I, I didn't expect us to be theorizing so much about Kay Gordon in this in this playthrough. Oh god, you, you were saying about Silent Hill and theorizing. I think it's setting in. It does, yeah. That's just what happens. You play the game for five minutes and then you start having these conversations. Silent Hill is a gateway drug to harder psychological horror. <laughs> it is. Yeah, my expert playthrough here. Well, what, what, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What are you doing? Uh, trying to get to that church. I guess you could follow the siren. The bells? Is that bells? It sounds like a siren. Oh, that noise is the static on our radio that we picked up earlier. When the when we hear the static, the enemies are closer. It's me again. Piss off. <laughs> I don't have any bread for you. Classic Scarborough experience. Uh -huh. Go down the beach. Here come the seagulls. We might have hit a little bit of a load there. <laughs> Maybe. But you know, it was so subtle I didn't even notice it. No. PS1 lasers, they don't live forever, okay? Look at me criticizing this classic game. What a what a hack. <laughs> It does suck that they're, like, unless you, you know, go through the, uh, you know, nightmare that is trying to buy anything on the PS3 store, there is no official way to get this game outside of that at the moment. Well, that's just preservation issues for you. I mean, Konami are doing that Metal Gear thing, so maybe uh, we'll see someone who won't appear again on modern platforms, who knows. That would be cool, and those... Uh, Metal Gear collections do look pretty cool. Hey, JC. He's bleeding from his foot. Just the amazing cameos in this game. Like, who's next, Butter? Uh, uh, no, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ringing that bell? I've been expecting you. It was foretold by Gyromancy. Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need, like, you got, you got the playbook for Gyromancy, I need to read up. You want the girl, right? Crystal girls, am I right? Line. You're talking about Cheryl. I see everything. You know something? Tell me. Stay back. Nothing is to be gained from floundering about at random. You heard that, Charlie? Well, that's been my strategy so far, and we've managed to get by, so... <laughs> the path of the hermit concealed by Flowros. What? What are you talking about? Yeah, I gotta admit, I'm a little bit lost as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you know that's the intention, because Harry doesn't know what is going on either. can break through the walls of darkness and counteract the wrath of the underworld. Is that just like a big block of cheese? These it's like a lanterns. mystical pyramid uh, artifact thing. Okay. I swear I saw it floating in the desert in Jack 3, but uh, it's here too. Uh, best Jack. Wait, don't go yet. I don't know about that. No. Um, let's, let's not get into a fight in a church, Tom. <laughs> let's not, this is holy ground. <laughs> The Bible specifically says we cannot get into console wars here. It's true, yes. Hell yeah. So apparently that's going to help us ward off evil, according to this lady. And we got the drawbridge key. Not bad, not bad. Oh, and what do we have over here? Nothing special. Oh, it's the health drink. 
there's something quite funny in this room that I I show us here. Like if you examine everything here, there's a picture on the wall. Nothing special. I think I think most mo he considers most of the things in here nothing special. <laughs> on the wall, nothing special. What a critic. Nothing special, but wait for it. Bible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, I don't know why that tickled me the way it did. He didn't want to weigh in on a... <laughs> no. He didn't want to give any further commentary on the Bible. That'll do it for this first week of Silent Hill. You'll come back next week for the continuation of Harry's adventure to find Cheryl. Bye for now. <laughs>